Hey there, in the previous part of the Panda 3D series, you downloaded the slag model. Today we'll be rigging it, so adding armature that we can then use to animate the model in the game. Hey guys, my name is Kamel and I'm a Python programmer and today I would like to talk about my book GUI Programming with Python and Kitty. Now in this book we're creating a project from scratch Oh, no, no. Now here you can see some samples from the book. Now, if you're interested in purchasing this book, you will find the links to it down in the description below. So, thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you will have at least as much fun reading my book as I had writing it. So, see you around. Anyway, open the slack.blend file in Blender. Now, go to Top View. Solid Shading. Object mode. Make sure it's object mode. Now we don't need the background image anymore, so I just removed it. Now we want to add the armature. The bone should start in the tail part of the slug and be extruded toward its front. As you know, whenever you add something in Blender, it appears at the location of the 3D cursor, which is now here. So we have to place the cursor on the tail. To do it, hold down Shift and right click on the tail part of the slug. Now the cursor is there. Now we can add the armature. Go to front view and hit shift A and then select armature. This will add the first bone at the location of the 3D cursor. Now go to edit mode. The first thing we want to do is scale the bone. You can select either an end of the bone, like here or here, or the whole bone, like here. Click on the middle part of the bone to select it all and hit S 0.15. Enter to resize it. Next, hit G, Z and move the bone just below the 3D cursor. The problem is that you can't see the lower end of the bone, so go to Object Data tab, which is here, and under Viewport Display, Check the in front box. Now you will always see the bone in front of the mesh. So I think we can move it slightly up. G, C, up. Okay. We will now be extruding bones. So select the upper end of the bone. To better see the segments of the slug, switch to wireframe shading. Now hit G and move the end of the bone to the end of the last segment of the slug body. So, here. Now we are ready to extrude the bones. To do that, just hit E and move the end of the new bone to the end of the following segment. So let's repeat this step until we get one bone for each segment. So, E to extrude here, E, E, 
E E E E E E Now we'll go to top view and extrude two more bones. In the front. E. E. Now we have to add bones for the tentacle. We can do it for just one tentacle and then mirror the bones for the other one. So let's say we'll rig the right tentacle first, which is the one at the bottom in top view. Let's start with placing the 3D cursor at the base of the tentacle. Again, to do it, hold down Shift and right click where you want the cursor to be. So let's place the cursor over here. You are still in edit mode, if you now hit shift A, a new bone will be added. Go to front view, as before the bone is way too big. So this time we're not going to scale it, but rather just move the end of the bone, the one high above the slug model over here, down. So hit G. Z and move it all the way down like that. I think this will do. Now we must position the bone. Go to right view. Click on the middle part of the bone to select it all and move the bone slightly down. So hit G, Z, so that the lower end is in the middle of the tentacle, like this. Now three bones in the tentacle will do. Toggle off the show x-ray button for better visibility. Select the upper end of the bone and move it to the end of the second segment of the tentacle. G here. Now go to top view. You'll see something like this. Just move the end of the bone to the end of the second segment. Hit G like this. Now extrude two more bones, each two segments long. So E to extrude two segments, E to extrude two segments. Now go to right view and make sure they are aligned like this. Good. Now each time we add a new bone, it gets a name, like bone, bone.001, bone.002, and so on. Names are not important for us except for the bones in the tentacles. As we will be mirroring the bones for the other tentacle, we can use a naming convention for them. So go to top view, select the first bone in the tentacle, the one at its base over here, and go to the bone tab, which is over here. Find the name of the bone and rename it tentacle1.r. Enter. The last part of the name, .r, stands for right, because this is the right tentacle. 
If you use this naming convention, the bones in the left tentacle will automatically get the same names, only differing in the last part of the names, being L, dot L, so for left. Now select the other two bones in the tentacle one by one, so this one here, and rename them tentacle 2, tentacle 2 dot R, and tentacle 3 dot R, enter. Now you can switch to solid shading. You will see the bones in front of the mesh. Now bones are parented to one another. To see how it works, we must switch to pose mode. This is another mode besides object mode and edit mode that we can use when working with bones. To do that, just select pose mode from the drop down menu over here. Pose mode. Now select one of the bones. like this one, hit R to rotate it. You can see that all the bones to the right of the selected bone are moving along. This is because each bone is parented to its predecessor. Okay, and now select another bone and rotate it. Again, the bones were rotated along with all its children. Now, in order to reset all the rotations, hit A to select all the bones in pose mode, and then hit Alt plus R. As you could see in the examples above, the bones of the tentacle didn't move along. This is because they are not parented to the body bones. So let's fix it. Let's go to edit mode. Select the first tentacle bone, so just this one bone over here, and then the body bone you want to parent it to. So let's say we want to parent this bone to this one. So shift, select. By the color, you can tell that the bone selected last is the active one. Now to parent the tentacle bone, hit Ctrl P and select Keep Offset. Now you can see a dotted line connecting the two bones, meaning that they are in a parent-child relationship. Now let's go back to pose mode. And check it out. If you now select one of the body bones and rotate it, like for example this one over here, you can see that the tentacle bones are moving along. Now it's time to mirror the bones. The mirroring is on the X axis, so you must rotate the slag model and then the armature accordingly. Go to object mode, top view, and select just the slug, but not the armature. We want to rotate around the slug's origin point, so first let's move the 3D cursor to that point. To do that, hit Shift S and select Cursor to select it. Now the 3D cursor is at the slug's origin point and we can rotate around it. If you hit on the pivot point drop down over here, you will see that median point is selected. You can see it by the symbol over here. If you leave it as is, the rotation will be around a median point between the origin points of the selected objects, but we want to rotate around the 3D cursor, so select this option here. Now the icon of the pivot point 
has changed. We're good to go. With the slug still selected, select the armature. So, shift. Armature. And hit R90. Enter. To rotate the two. Now the objects have been rotated, which you can see if you hit M and open the sidebar. To keep things clear, let's apply the rotation. The rotation on the Z axis is negative 90 degrees. So let's go to Object menu and under Apply, select Rotation. Now it is 0 degrees. Now we can finally mirror the tentacle bones so that the other tentacle is also rigged. Let's close the sidebar, zoom in a bit. Now select just the armature and go to edit mode, top view and select just the three tentacle bones that you want to mirror. One, two, three. Now we'll go to front view. Let's open the sidebar again. And in the tool tab, check the X axis mirror checkbox. Now in the armature menu, select symmetrize. This will duplicate the selected bones and mirror them on the x-axis. Now, thanks to the naming convention we used before, the new bones have the same names as the ones in the other tentacle, but with the prefix L. Go ahead and select one of the bones and check it out. Tentacle2.L Now we can set the pivot point back to maiden point. So, our model is fully rigged. In the next video, we'll be talking about inverse kinematics, which we're going to use to make the animations even easier. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.